Come, loyal fools. Today, we do Nagash's work. Arkhan the Black has returned after centuries of fruitless searching for any clue of his master. Finally, there are omens of Nagash's imminent return. The Black Pyramid stirs, but to reveal the secrets and power within, it must be recovered before even attempting to bring the Great Necromancer back to life. This will not be an easy task, however, as many forces move against Arkhan. Determined to stop any attempt at resurrecting Nagash, this is a narrative campaign set in Total War Warhammer 2. In this first episode, Arkhan the Black will attempt to establish a foothold in the unforgiving deserts of Araby before uniting the remnants of the Great Necromancer for his inevitable resurrection. The hunt has not been in vain, and all will come to fruition soon. The land of the dead was once cultivated and populated with teeming multitudes. It is now a desolated wasteland, with ruined cities buried under the shifting sands. The landscape is a barred sea of desert, a monotonous yellow-brown, scorched by the merciless sun. Apart from a few cities still standing clinging to the coasts, these deserts are uninhabited except by a few nomad tribes, roaming hordes of greenskins or beastmen, and the numberless undead servants that are buried beneath the sands. These lands also attract adventurers and tomb robbers, but the vast majority of mortals that dare to trespass too deeply into the treacherous deserts are swallowed whole by the shifting sands, scorched under the burning gaze of the sun, or put to the sword by skeletal warriors that awake from time to time to strike down any foe that dares to enter a necropolis or gets too close to a long lost treasure. Arkhan was finally back in the once great land and the time to plot the inevitable return of Nagash was now. Inside a dark chamber in the Sorcerer's Island the Lich King and his loyal Lich Priest, Berecht, discussed the course of action to take. They needed to establish a solid hold on the region. There was no time to lose, and the rituals for waking up hundreds of skeletons began in earnest. The time for war was coming. To the east of Arkhan's position were the Atalan Mountains, home to the dwarves that inhabited the region. Three holds made up their core, and according to our scouts, they were in the midst of a bloody conflict with a massive war herd of beastmen that constantly battered those lands. The Blooded Axe tribe, led by a cruel leader known only as Limrender, had grown drastically over the last few months and was already laying waste to the northern dwarf settlement. The Greybeard Prospectors had a war to wage, and their homeland to defend. They would not be an obstacle, for now. What called the attention of the Lich King was the threat of a Bretonian force nearby. Honor before glory. The Knights of the Flame, as they called themselves, had traveled from far lands in a war of errantry. The Knights of the Flame were also supported by mobs of peasants. The mortal fools were too close to Arkhan, and his newly established position in the land of assassins. Even worse, they dared to siege Wizard Caliph's palace, a place Arkhan had secretly established as his foothold within the region, the place where their expansion would start. Apparently, his intentions were discovered by the errant knights but their interference could not be allowed. For the Bretonians, the idea of the dead walking is especially abhorrent 
to noble and commoner alike. Peasants will often bury their loved ones face down in the earth, with dried crow's feet in their mouths and cloves of garlic in their ears, apparently to stop them from rising from their graves. Maybe that was the reason the errant knights were on those lands, to eliminate the undead menace that constantly stalked their homeland. To the Lich King this mattered not. Their errantry wars would end in that damned place. After some deliberation, the course of action was decided. The knights would soon find their flame extinguished and their bones added to Arkin's forces. The board was set. As the blackness of night fell, Arkin the Black, accompanied by Lich Priest Barakt and a host of newly risen skeletal warriors, began a dark ritual within the Sorcerer's Islands. For a full moon, unearthly screams were heard, and an unnatural purple haze encircled the place. The following morning, as the sun rose, they would march towards the foolish invaders, and they would make them know their mistake. The Bretonians would know that Arkan the Black has returned. The Knights of the Flame were few in number, but the fine skills of the Mountain Knights made up for it. The small garrison of magically animated skeletal warriors defended the palace from within. The Knights, supported by a decent number of peasants, attacked the city entrances and were breaking down the defenders as time passed. They would not last much longer. If it were not for the martial skills and commanding abilities of the Tomb Prince Sarthus, surely the palace would have fallen to the Bretonians a day or two earlier. But the Tomb Prince bought enough time for the Lich King to arrive. Coming from the north, Arkan announced his arrival to the Bretonian host, sending forth a single undead messenger, daring the knights to face him in open battle. The mounted warriors considered their options. Should they continue their siege, the knights would soon find themselves between the palace, still well defended by Prince Sarthus and his garrison, and the approaching Lich King's relief force. They decided to face the new menace in open fields, lifting the siege and riding north to meet the undead host. The two armies met in an open space not too far from Wizard Caliph's palace but distance enough to prevent any significant intervention from Prince Sarthus and his forces. The Knights of the Flame saw their enemies approaching. They were eager to send the undead host back to their graves. The shifting sands of the desert moved to uncover more of the undead legions. The ranks of skeleton soldiers were bolstered by the presence of filthy crypt ghouls awakened from their lairs during the dark ceremony that took place right before departing the Sorcerer's Islands. The ghouls were now fully committed to serve their master, unconsciously drawn to the dark magic that constantly surrounded Arkham the Black. The proud leader of the Knights of the Flame began reciting an inspiring speech and condemning the undead host approaching them. Do you know who I am? Arkin cared not. The order to attack was given in a sepulchral silence. The will of their master alone was enough to send the entire host of skeletons and crypt ghouls forward. Rank upon rank of skeletal soldiers marched animated by the souls of their former bodies. These warriors only remember the absolute loyalty they had in life, and all the military drills and experience they had in the ways of war. The skeletal horde would serve Arkan without hesitation, and they were ready to fight the Bretonians in front of them. A massive tomb scorpion was awakened during the dark ceremony. It skittered menacingly along the ranks of skeletons. These monstrous beings are made of a combination of stone, fused bone, wood, and metal, and they are the creations of the mortuary cult. Animated by dark magic, the scorpion was now a deadly living weapon with enough power to crush any enemy in front of it. 
the Knights of the Flame pounded across the field and charged in against the ranks of skeletal infantry. Eager to prove their worth and skill, and thus attain status and renown amongst their people. They had charged boldly, and their impact broke a thousand bones from the undead host. But their momentum was swiftly stopped by the overwhelming numbers of crypt ghouls supporting the skeletal hordes. The main body of peasants charged in with the intention to support their knights, and the battle turned fierce. Knights fought desperately, heedless of danger while the peasants struggled to support the noble mounted warriors. Horses' hooves flailed, shattering bones and caving skulls. But as more and more skeletons and ghouls entered the fray, the fight quickly changed to an outright slaughter. The massive scorpion charging in and attacking from beneath the sands further discouraged the valiant knights, while the crypt ghouls devoured any fleeing Bretonians without mercy. Knights, peasants, and horses alike were eaten by the ghouls without distinction. After the battle, the last of the mortals fell lifeless to the sands. But not before revealing where the rest of the Bretonian forces were located, Arkan learned that to weaken the Bretonians' position and control the entire region of the Land of Assassins, they would have to march north to the settlement of Lashik and devoid the place of all life. Within the courts of Kalis Palace, Arkan reunited with his Lich Priest Berect and the Tomb Prince Sarthus. The Bold Prince received the title Defender of the Fate as a reward for his valiant defense of the palace and was given a better equipped force to command. Together they sat and discussed the next action to take. On this channel, we are putting together narrative Total War cinematic battles and Warhammer lore videos. A special thank you goes to our Patreon supporters who help us in the making of more content. You can also join Patreon and earn extra perks while supporting the videos to come. Find the link in the description below. Make sure to subscribe, and thank you for watching. See you on the next one.